Hi, everyone. Happy to be here with you today. We will be presenting Beatlemania and give me just a second to get our screen pulled up. I'm Leanne. This is Camille. And presenting with us today too is going to be Megan, Viraj, and Orchi. So almost ready here. All right, so we are ready to go. So survival of the fittest is a term that most of you are probably familiar with. For some of you, this saying might evoke the thought that only the strong can survive, in which case this strength training guinea pig would be in really great shape. However, this is not the true meaning of the term. So what is survival of the fittest? Survival of the fittest is another term for natural selection, which is a term that was originally described by Charles Darwin in the mid 1800s and requires these two statements to be true to occur. So the first is that individuals within a population must be able to survive and to reproduce and variation of traits within a population must be heritable. So how does the environment influence traits? This is really what we're going to be discussing with you all today. Before we move forward though, I want to discuss in just a little bit more detail the terms variation of traits and what it means for them to be heritable. So here you can see a group of husky dogs. And for the sake of this presentation, we'll call this group a population. You'll notice that some of these individuals have very distinct characteristics, such as blue eyes or brown eyes, dark fur or blonde fur, but they are all very easily identifiable as a husky. So this is a perfect example of how variation can occur within a population. In this case, the traits of the huskies are artificially selected through selective breeding rather than through natural selection, but it's a very similar concept. But what happens if a husky and a corgi, another type of dog with very similar or very distinct traits, have uh, puppies? Well, the puppy would have traits that belong to each of its parents. So here you can see in this husky corgi mix, it has the very distinct body shape of a corgi, but it has the really unique coloration of a husky. So once again, this is a form of artificial selection, but it's a really great example of how traits can be inherited. So during natural selection, these traits, rather than being selected for how they look, would most likely improve an animal's chance of survival and reproductive success. And so just going off of that, because we're going to introduce the idea of past generations and phylogenetic inheritance. So all dogs come from a common wolf ancestor. And then throughout time, humans bred them to get the unique breeds of dog that we know today. So looking at that in this big circle, you have the different classifications of breeds like spaniels and hounds. So these are all basically have been bred for over generations to have these different traits. But we don't want you to forget that today we're talking about beetles. Beetles are really cool animals. They account for 25% of species on earth and they occupy many environmental roles, most of which are involved in nutrient cycling. And they're found on every continent except Antarctica. So here are just a few examples of beetles that you may be familiar with. Everybody loves a dung beetle rolling up its ball on the sand. In the center is an emerald ash borer, which is an invasive type of beetle, which is found here in New York State. They're responsible for the destruction of ash trees because they eat through the wood. They're recycling those nutrients. And finally is the firefly, which I think everybody should be familiar with. It's a very classic example of a beetle. And so going back to what we were talking earlier with phylogenetics, all of these beetles come from a common ancestor. So what we're showing here are horned beetles. And all of these horned beetles have this common ancestor back in time. And over time, they diverged to develop different species. So you can see along, along here, you have the different sized horns of these beetles. So we want to ask you how you think these traits are selected for. So why would having big horns be valuable for a beetle? So what do you think? Are these different traits selected for because of protection from predators, increased attractiveness, or so on? So you can use your reactions accordingly, or if you have any other ideas, you can type them in the chat. All right. So really any of these, any of these could be reasons for natural selection. So hopefully nobody gave the shocked emoji. <laughs> And so from here, you're going to go on and design your very own beetle, and you're going to get to go on an adventure with it. So I'm going to paste in the chat in just a second a link to a PowerPoint where you'll get to go through and design a beetle. And then you're going to want to write down, there's going to be a four character code that signifies what your beetle is. So you're going to want to write that down because that's going to be very important. So 
So have fun designing a beetle. And if you have any questions or issues with it, just let us know and we can try to help you out. And for those of you with your cameras on, you'll be able to add your beetle as your virtual background. Viraj is pointing out his up in the corner. And the way that you'll find that once you've finished designing your beetle, there is that four digit code that Camille mentioned. You'll find another folder in box with downloads of your beetle. So you can go ahead and download the file, the picture that corresponds with your beetle and set it as your background. So now hopefully you all have your beetles and it is time for us to travel to a new island and see how your beetle will fare. We're using an island as an example for this. It's kind of an enclosed habitat. So these are going to be brand new beetles coming to this island. We're not sure how they'll survive, but we will find out. So as soon as our beetles get to their new island, they're immediately faced with a predatory pressure. Okay, so they land on a stone beach, and I think you can immediately see that some beetles blend into their new stone beach environment better than others. And this is going to have a really big impact on which beetles are prey for predators. So when the hungry falcons come, they can much more easily identify the bright color uh, blue and green beetles than the ones that blend in more with their environment, the black and yellow. But you probably also noticed when you were designing your beetle that beetles can come in many different sizes. We can have large, medium, small, and the small beetles do a much better job at hiding in the rocks. So even if they're brightly colored, it's actually a protection from these predators. So here are just some outcomes for how size and color can impact predation. And we want to know if your beetle survived the beach. So we have a pretty good mix here. Mine certainly did not. All right. So the next up is a competitive pressure, right? So these beetles have landed on their beach. They're making their new home on this beautiful island. But now they need to start eating and surviving, right? We all like to eat. So we um, climb up into the forest and discover a beautiful ripe red strawberry. And so now the different accessories that these beetles have, so the big horns or pinchers or long legs or acid spit will all make them more or less suited to win in a fight to get this strawberry. So first this long-legged beetle, the really long legs make it very fast and able to climb trees very effectively. And so while that strawberry looks really good, it can go climb up a tree and find something elsewhere that the other beetles don't have access to, and it doesn't need to get in a fight and potentially get injured. Next up, we have the horned beetle, and unfortunately, he's a little bit clumsy. And that big horn is very impressive looking, but didn't let him get to the strawberry very well. So that one's also not winning the strawberry in today's fight. And so that leaves us with our acid spit beetle and our large Pinterest beetle. And so sometimes in life, things are a little bit a roll of the dice. And so in some cases, say in the case of odd numbers, the acid spit beetle will have a su successful aim and fire and he'll hit the other beetle, um, causing some damage and will win the strawberry. However, sometimes the acid spit beetle might not have very good aim. So if he rolled say an even number, just 50-50 chance here, he might miss his target and the pincer beetle has those big and um, scary pinchers and will scare it off and win the strawberry for itself. And so some general outcomes for that too, is that in the case of the strawberry, but not all of the resources on the island, the acid spit beetle and the large pinchers beetle will win and the long legged and the big horned beetle will go off and find food somewhere else. So did you get the berry today? Let us know with your reactions again. Great, seems like it's about a 50-50 split. <laughs> okay, and so Sometimes your island, right, so an island is not going to be a very constant environment, and you can see that our island has a volcano. And so what happens if there is a volcanic explosion? And so when there's a volcanic explosion, there are a lot of changes to the environment. So if we go from a top-down view of our island, um, you're going to have all these clouds coming up, and you're going to reveal a kind of new environment for our beetles to survive in. And so with this volcanic explosion, we kind of have four new distinct regions to the island. 
And so on the western side of the island, the explosion caused a rock slide. And so now that side of the island is completely covered in these big white and gray stones. On the south side of the island, due to the wind patterns at the time of the explosion, there's a lot of ash, so fine black ash covering that portion of the island. On the northern side, there were really tall hills that protected a nice little valley, and so that stayed nice and green and happy. And then finally, on the eastern side, because of how the lava flowed, the plains caught fire and burnt down all the trees, but some new grass and weeds quickly took place, so rapid ecological succession. And so we're going to visit each side of the island and each of our workshop leaders is gonna hopefully lead us through one of these and talk about how the beetles that were here before the explosion are now going to fare the new portions of the island and if the same traits will still be successful. And so I'll start out with the Northern side. So this Northern side is still very green and lush. So does anybody have any ideas what beetles would do well here? Maybe pop it in the, I guess we can use the reactions. So just as a reference, the bright green, there's trees, there's nice little plants. Does anybody know what options would do best here? Okay, so we have bright colors, lots of bright colors. Yeah, so those green and blue beetles are gonna be pretty happy on this nice green portion of the island. And so that's what we had is either the beetles with the long legs because there's still trees around, the green beetles, the blue beetles would all do well here. And then one example of one that wouldn't do so well is a really large black beetle with a horn because they're a bit clumsy. So next up, I believe is Megan to take us away for the rock slide portion of the island. Yes, yeah, so we are in the western side of the island now. And as Camille and Leanne have stated, the volcanic eruption caused all these pebbles to fall all over the ground, creating this really rocky environment. And so again, what kind of traits do you think would fare best here in this type of environment with large rocks? And yeah, let's look at some of the reactions. I think maybe that one. Yeah, I see some small beetles, dark colors, small beetles, long legs. Yeah, all good choices. So the best beetles suited here would be the small ones, like we talked about earlier. They can hide beneath the rocks and avoid the predation of the hawks and other predators on the island. And any color, since none of the beetles are white, any of the beetles would have the same outcome since none of them camouflage that well. And the large beetles would obviously not do so well. They can't hide, they're just out exposed in the open. All right, so now we're on the east side of the island. We we didn't get too lucky here. It appears as though the lava has flown all the way through this beautiful terrain. And originally everything was was uh, was black and dead. But as you all know, even like when spring comes here in New York, the first thing to grow is grass before all the leaves and the trees come back. So we have most uh, in general a a dark landscape with scattered grasses throughout. So what do, what do we think will survive here? What color, what type of beetles? Anyone? Oh, wait, can we switch, go to the next slide? Give the options. Yes, what do we think? With some sparse grass and dark, generally dark landscape. So I'm seeing, so yeah, dark colors. I agree with that. Long legs, perhaps. What else? Poison spray? Yep. I think poison spray would be pretty good here. Dave thinks small le small beetles. Yes, to take advantage of these small patches of grass. I agree. And so this is what we came up with as what we believe is best suited to survive as well as what's least suited to, least suited to survive. However, if anyone wants to argue a point with us, you may, you may prove your point is correct because this is not an exhaustive list, of course. In my opinion, I think any of the small ones regardless of color, could have probably survived because if they're small and just like kind of hiding between the blades of grass, maybe they, they would stay in the chance. But certainly the small green and black beetles would be best. And then the big guys, large and blue, probably would not. So that's us on the east side. OK, so now we are on the south side of the island. And as you can see, everything is pretty gloomy, dark, dead, no plants, no grass. So 
we are gonna have a guess on which beetles would survive here. So yeah, if you could please use your reactions to indicate which beetles you think might survive here. So what are we seeing? Dark colors, six. Six votes for dark colors. And two for dark colors and one for our pincers. And ooh, long legs. We have some long legs too. Let's see. So what we thought would be best surviving here is the small black beetles. So the reason for that is the camouflage, since everything is black and gloomy with no grass, we think that the small black beetles would survive best. And anything that's not black might have difficulty surviving in here. So we wanna thank you for visiting our island. And if anybody has any questions, now would be a great time for you to point them out. Does anybody have any? I know oh, Leanne's I responding to a couple in the chat. So the first question is, what about a food source for barrages with the scraggly leaves? So I don't know, can everybody hear me? I'll <laughs> I think that it is important to remember that beetles can survive in even some of the most extreme environments and that they're nutrient cyclers. So they'll be able to find food sources. They're not going to be, maybe there's other insects that have also been able to survive they can get nutrients from the plants that are remaining. Those new grasses are a good source of food for them. So while there won't be any beautiful forest strawberries remaining, they're pretty hardy animals and can probably find nutrients somewhere. There was another question for why would they be small? So I think that just small beetles would be able to integrate and find areas where they can hide, maybe not be so visible to predators. Yeah, so kind of a repeat of what was going on on that rocky beach where the little beetles are able to kind of hide in between the rocks where the larger beetles are stuck up on top. And I think Megan has something to say too. I do. I know the, the large beetles do not fare so well on our island with the circumstances we talked about, but what we didn't talk about was the benefit of like finding a potential mate. And so a bright colored beetle that's large may look more appealing for a mate and they could boost their reproductive chances. We didn't cover that. We, we focus more on predation and surviving certain environments, but there are, there are uh, pros and cons to certain characteristics. Okay, so we are going to challenge you to one final thought. Our beetles were on this lush green hilly rocky beach island, but if they jumped back on their log and floated away again and came upon a new island, what do you think would be actually the worst beetle to survive here? So in this case, we have just kind of a yellow sandy beach island with a couple of palm trees, very different looking from our past island. But what you learned from what's good traits to survive on certain islands, what do you think would be really bad traits like hot pink beetles or beetles the size of horses? So send in a chat what you think would be the worst possible idea to being a beetle in this particular environment would be. And another way you can think about it is that remember, natural selection requires that you're able to pass your genetic material on to the next generation. So while you're thinking about this, think about beetles that will not survive well here. A if beetle with one leg. Yep, I think that that <laughs> might be a very difficult... <laughs> Not sure if it would count as a beetle since beetles would have six legs, <laughs> but it's a good thought. Horse-sized beetles do sound very scary. <laughs> and beetles that can't climb trees, yeah, that probably would be an issue here. They might have difficulty uh, finding food source. Mm -hmm. And yeah, large beetle would have to eat quite a lot. And this island definitely doesn't seem to have very much in terms of food sources. Horned beetle also, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Large and dark colored. These are all really great responses. Yeah, so sometimes only one beetle. That's a really great point, too. If only one beetle makes it to this island, there is no way that it will be able to survive and reproduce. <laughs> it does only have one tree. I love seeing all of these responses. <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes it's really cool to look at it from the opposite direction to kind of better understand. So we have a question, does the horn ever have a benefit? Yeah, so it, it's uh, considered, an, it could be considered an attractive characteristic in finding a mate. And I think too, 
we might be simplifying these traits a little bit for the purpose of the workshop. So in the real world, we know that horned beetles do exist and it might have some functional relevance other than what we're saying. But for today's exercise, we'll say that that horn is really great in finding a mate. Oh yeah, and Viraj says the horn could also be used in beetle versus beetle combat if it doesn't flip over. Mm -hmm. There are some pretty cool videos out there showing beetles fighting each other with their horns. All right, great. Well, thank you guys all. Hope you enjoyed the workshop today. Yeah, have a good rest of your day.